Bayern Munich take on Real Madrid in the first leg of their UEFA Champions League semi-final. And to look ahead to that one, I'm delighted to be joined by Sam Tai and Abby Summers. Uh, how are you guys doing, Sam? How's it going? Very well, mate. Thank you. And you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Good weekend. <laughs> uh, Abby, how are you? <laughs> I'm great. It's good to see you, Harry. <laughs> Always good to see you. Right, let's get into this UEFA Champions League clash between two of European football's real heavyweights, Bayern Munich versus Real Madrid. It's a semi-final I don't think many of us predicted. I think a lot of people felt that this would be Arsenal against Manchester City. It's not, though. Um, Sam, for Bayern, this is massive given what happened in the Bundesliga this season. Yeah, the heavyweights always find their way to this part of the competition, don't they? By yeah. hook or by crook. I feel so foolish for assuming this would be an all-English affair. <sighs> I look back at that and thinking, what was I thinking? Betting against Real Madrid and betting on that very young, inexperienced Arsenal side, it was clearly a mistake. But there you go. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, look, it's a hell of a game. And for Bayern, they've known this is their last route to success for ages, haven't they? I mean, I know that Leverkusen only just recently were confirmed as the Bundesliga champions, but this has been obvious since, like, December? Probably January, they've been way off the pace. So probably no surprise to see them maybe conserving a few legs at the weekend. Yes, able to rest a few players. They're not without their injury concerns. But for Bayern, this is literally everything. And then Madrid, you know, they're going to win the title. They're so far clear. They were able to rest legs too. So hopefully we see a really high octane affair here. When these types of teams tend to meet, it tends to be very frenetic. Mm. Like even I'm gasping for air on the sofa watching them. So <laughs> I can't imagine what it's like to, watch, to be on there on the pitch. Abby, what is it about Real Madrid? Because they seem to always find a way always. in this competition. Even when they're the underdogs, they seem to find a way to get over the line. What do you put it down to? Is it experience? Is it the quality of squad they have? Honestly, I think it's a mentality thing. I think when you are just monsters in a competition, like we all know that the Champions League is Real Madrid's competition. So, of course, we... we you know, expect City to, you know, come through that. But maybe we're being naive. Like, we're talking about Real Madrid here, one of the best teams ever, you know, probably the best team ever in the Champions League, that's for sure. But, you know, you look at the likes of players they have, whether that's Vinicius or Valverde or, you, you know, Jude Bellingham being the one. I mean, to come in at what he's done at 20 years old and be Mr Real Madrid and command that space, I mean, it's a tough thing to do, but he's probably become their most clutch player this season. And I, I think you can never, ever write them off. And we were foolish to do that. Um, and then obviously looking at looking at Bayern, I mean, you know, they've also been great in, in this competition as well. I think that we... We thought because of maybe how they've been in the league that Arsenal would just kind of dust them off, but that, that wasn't the case. And you find that European pedigree with these teams like Bayern or Real Madrid. And then also you add someone like Harry Kane into the mixture who, OK, in the league, they've, they've lost it for the first time in 11 years. But in this competition, the most elite players on the biggest stage it, it, it is that mentality that will carry you through. And I, I'm really looking forward to this fixture. I really am. I mean, obviously, I'm, I, I guess, a bit of a Bayern fan. I would say because of Kane, um, you know, 42 goals in all comps this season. It's just crazy. And I think that people are now seeing what obviously Spurs fans saw in terms of the way that he holds the ball up and he, he brings people into play. It's not just he can he can finish off. He's just such an all-round amazing player. Um, and, you know, if he, if he goes on and wins the, wins, the, wins the Champions League, you know, good on him. Good on Sam, him. it feels like Harry Kane really <laughs> does need to win something to crown off what's been a really, really good career. Is this his opportunity with Bayern Munich? This is the only opportunity he has left this season, but then he has next season. You know, he's going to be there for more. It's not a loan deal, is it? It will be all right. Harry Kane will eventually win a trophy, uh, be it this season or next season. It is a massive shame that the spotlight is being shone on, on this particular player. In this particular season, the first time in over a decade that Bayern do not win the league happens to be the first time that Harry Kane plays for them. It is not his fault. <laughs> More than 40 goals in a campaign is something to be very, very proud of. It is not his fault that they lost in the Pokal. It is not his fault that they lost the Super Cup. No. Nope. Did he even come on? I think he was like a five-minute sub at the end of that one. So, yes, it's, it's easy to mock. But <laughs> I'm going to be torn here because I don't... Usually, when, when I just want an English player to do well on a big occasion because I'm desperate for the English national team to finally get over the hump. Mm. So I always look at these situations to go, well, I want the English player to thrive and, 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 and leap that hurdle. Well, I've got Bellingham and I've got Kane, so I win either way. So I'm yeah. just going to be super entertained. Yeah. In terms of the styles, Abby, I'm really fascinated to see how both managers are going to approach this one. We were talking off air about mm. Thomas Tuchel being someone who's very adaptable. Carlo Ancelotti is more a kind of go out there and figure it out yourselves kind of guy. How do you expect these two teams to approach this first leg? Because it is a first leg mm. and with no away goals now, the dynamic of these ties is very, very different. 
Yeah, I, I think with the the two cool the two cool thing, um, I feel like he does actually get quite a lot of criticism for the way in which that he he might set up Bayern and, and and the way that they play, but. That's probably because of the, the stars they have, like the Musialas and the Sanes and the Nabris and, and Kane. You know, they can create so much and sometimes they're a little bit more um, pragmatic, I'd say. Um, but at the same time, if I look back at the City game, you know, Real Madrid did a job. You wouldn't necessarily always ask Madrid to sit in and kind of be a bit more counter, but they also have that. So I feel like in this first leg... I, I think it might be a bit more of a cagey affair for, for Madrid. I think they might do not as much what they did to City, but I think they may be a bit more cautious in their approach, maybe sit and go for the counters, you know, when you've got that amount of of pace on the break, whether it is Bellingham and Camavinga, you know, the, the likes of Schirmeni in midfield as well. Like, they can afford to kind of sit in and try and catch Bayern and let invite the pressure. And then obviously take it back to, to the Bernabeu where, you know, all eyes are on them and they've got everyone in front of them. So... I don't know. I feel like Thomas Tuchel will do what Thomas Tuchel does best, which is a, a, allow kind of those front players to kind of flourish when they can. But I still, I don't, I don't think that they're going to compromise much in terms of defensively and that kind of solidity at the back. I mean, Eric Dyer has has been their their best centre back. He's been really good. He's been really good, and I don't know where that's come from. I got well, to be honest. Uh, it's, keep, it's keeping that back line solid and, and stable, and not asking too much movement in it. So it's letting kind of that midfield and Harry Kane and, and everyone I just listed kind of flourish up front when when they have the opportunities. But it's making sure that defensively they try and be as solid as they as they possibly can. So I think that they're also going to want to concede to Madrid. Sam, two cool versus Ancelotti, two managers that are very experienced in this competition. They've both won this competition. But the fact that away goals has been taken away, how much does that kind of nullify some of their previous experiences? Because I'm not saying it takes away from their previous experiences completely, but it does mean that they have to rethink the way that they approach these ties. So is it interesting now to see experienced coaches having to rethink their plans going into ties like this? That's always interesting, yeah. And I hadn't really considered the fact that, not that we're saying that 20 years worth of experience in this competition for Carlo Ancelotti has just been wiped clean and is no longer relevant, but like, you do have to adapt to the rules, you do have to adapt to the different game states. Look, if there's a man that can figure this out, it's absolutely Carlo Ancelotti. Mm. And the, re the, the reality is he'll probably figure it out by going, the players can figure it out for themselves. He'll just sit there and be like, Vinicius, Rodrigo, Jude, you're brilliant. You'll find a way, won't you? You'll find a way. Also, you're looking at Modric, who's got years and years of experience, training crews as well. And the same, I guess, Thomas Müller in, in the other aspect for Bayern. So there is a lot of people that have won this competition that in the mix still. So, I mean, if that's Carlo's way, then it, it clearly works, doesn't it? And Tuchel's way is the direct opposite, by the yeah. way. He yeah. tries to tell everyone who to pass to, to yeah. create the perfect triangle 16-pass move goal. So it is a massive clash of styles here. But ultimately, it will come down to the quality on the pitch. I think it's going to be a really balanced and even game. There is not... Neither of these teams want the ball constantly like City did against Real Madrid and neither of these teams want to sit off yeah. in the way that Madrid... Like, it will be even. There will be spells and counter spells and it will be brilliant. Just looking at the two predicted lineups, there are so many potential match winners on both sides. Um, I'm going to ask you for your tips as to who could be the difference maker in this first leg at least. Um, Abby, I'll come to you first. Well, I mean, look, I can't look any further than someone like Harry Kane who always makes the difference whether he's assisting or scoring. I've, I've got to look at him Jude Bellingham I mean I watched him not not too long ago in that El Clasico game and just the runs he makes off the off the ball as well as getting into those spaces as well I mean you'd expect him to be prominent um, but I'm just looking at the lineups here I mean there is just so much talent in both of those teams I feel like Madrid maybe edge it a little bit more just because of that midfield and also if you think you can bring on the likes of a Modric um, but I actually felt that Lema who I'm not entirely sure is, is is fit for this game but I thought he was great against Arsenal was. I think he really kind of ran that midfield so I'm looking at both of the midfields and the up fronts and I'm thinking they are quite quite evenly matched but I don't know something about it is just screaming Madrid for me Sam? I think that's both teams would be wise to attack down their left flanks and, and, and approach and try and attack the other team's right side. Madrid will not have Carvajal, who is suspended, and they will have to answer a question as to who actually plays right back. Mm. Could be Nacho, could be Lucas Vazquez. They've arguably been light at right back for like three years now and they just haven't really addressed it. Well, now you're going to have to put a square peg in a round hole. And if you're the, you're the other team, well, probably don't go after Alfonso Davies. Like, that's probably quite silly. Maybe, maybe try Kimmich. Not that he's a bad player by any stretch. He's brilliant, but he 
he's back at right back, not his favourite mm. position. And he does like to drift infield as yeah, well. Yeah, precisely. Um, just very quick fire predictions for this one. Bayern Munich versus Real Madrid. Oh, uh, I still stand by that. I think it might be a little bit cagey in this first leg. Um, I'm going to go for a draw. I'm going to go for a one all on this one. Sam? Yeah, I kind of feel the draw too, but I won't copy. I'll go for 2-2. Two, two. Lovely stuff. Bayern Munich versus Real Madrid in the UEFA Champions League semi-final first leg. Let us know your predictions in the comments down below.